Superstorm Sandy struck at one of the very busiest regions for aviation on the planet and forced a shutdown of air travel along the eastern seaboard. As hurricane force winds and flooding brought New York to a standstill. It's America's biggest city and the main gateway to the USA, so inevitably visitors were stranded. Many of you have got in touch about your terrifying and expensive ordeals, including Louise and Robin Gillard from Leeds in Northern England. That one. I love that one. Louise had booked a surprise birthday treat for her husband. I had sort of five weeks extremely excited looking forward to going um, and yeah we both couldn't wait it was a, it really was going to be a trip of a lifetime. The trip started well enough but then the weather deteriorated rapidly. Their hotel the Salisbury was near a building site where a giant crane was being battered by high winds. And we actually heard the the crane collapse which was a, a tremendous sound. We had an announcement from the hotel that uh, the police department wanted us to evacuate the building. The whole street was closed off, so nobody was allowed to go back. The manager found rooms at a hotel further uptown, the Milburn, but not enough for everyone, so they had to double up and share a suite with another couple. We actually thought at the time we would be going back to our original hotel the following morning. Um, what actually happened was the, the storm obviously was a lot more severe than anybody had thought and so the street remained closed, we couldn't go back into the Salisbury and we ended up staying in the Milburn sharing with the mans for three nights. As the crisis dragged on, Louise and Robin spent hundreds of dollars trying to cope. They booked their trip through Thomas Cook which is one of Britain's biggest travel companies and which is bound by European rules to look after customers stranded abroad if they bought a package vacation. These state that your travel provider must arrange accommodation and flights but according to Robin this didn't happen. The couple were due to fly out with the US airline United the following day Tuesday the 30th of October but as we know all flights were cancelled and they had no idea when or how they were going to get home. When it became apparent that we weren't going to be able to go back to the Salisbury, we uh, contacted Thomas Cook to see whether it would be possible for them to organise some other uh, alternative accommodation. There was no guarantee that we could stay in the Milburn. We'd been told we could stay for one evening. Um, uh, and at that point, Thomas Cook said that there was nothing they could do that uh, it wasn't their responsibility, it was a responsibility of the airlines and that we should actually um, find our own, make our own arrangements and find ourselves another hotel. Thomas Cook confirmed to us that they promised to pay for accommodation but only up to the equivalent of $160 a night. The cheapest hotel sold by Thomas Cook in Manhattan that I've been able to find is $180 a night. It doesn't seem a realistic offer. You cannot get anywhere in Manhattan for £100 a night um, and we really were struggling at that point to find any accommodation as well. Um, the following weekend uh, was due to be the New York Marathon which was still very much on at that point and because a lot of the hotels in downtown Manhattan had been uh, evacuated um, there was a real pressure on the number of rooms. The couple's ordeal continued. After three days, they had to leave the Milburn Hotel because it was fully booked. We phoned Thomas Cook again at that point, asking for help because we were desperate. We had nowhere to stay. Um, we were trying to contact hotels ourselves, but with no success. So we rang them just on the off chance that they knew somewhere or could get us in somewhere. Um, and again pointed out this was the help desk pointed out that there was little they could do and you know we would have to do that ourselves they ended up staying at jfk airport for the last night of their trip we put all this to thomas cook and they told us as a result of the recent storm affecting new york thomas cook provided assistance to a number of its holiday makers including mr and mrs gillard including seeking new flights and trying to find alternative hotel accommodation. 
We appreciate how distressing the events in New York must have been, but we took our responsibility seriously, and we're pleased the family have now returned home safe. An extreme weather event makes life difficult for everyone, not least the frontline staff working for airlines and hotels in the affected area. But what could our customers reasonably expect from their travel agent? Well, they should be able to help you out finding you that alternative accommodation of an equivalent standard to what you were booked into originally. And also, if you've got problems with your flights, they should help you out finding alternative flights, finding alternative transportation. The help that travellers received often depended on the nationality of the airline they were flying with. Some carriers from the Americas and Asia said that as the weather event was beyond their control, passengers would need to fend for themselves. And it's not just weather that can play havoc with travel plans. Political unrest has also caused a fair amount of disruption in recent years. In Thailand, the anti-government red shirt protests in 2010 turned Bangkok into a virtual war zone. Embassies told their citizens to leave, but many visitors were trapped in their hotels. Brett Henry happened to be there on business at the time. It really was a bizarre experience kind of being trapped in this city with hundreds of thousands of other tourists all trying to get out. Um, and, and really no ways to exit the country. I was fortunate in that I flew uh, a full-service carrier, Singapore Airlines, and someone from the airline contacted me the day of the uh, riot, gave me their name, their contact number, told me they were going to make sure I got home safely, and they would keep me updated. Um, I thought it would be a day or so, but it ended up being a week. His colleague who'd flown on a low-cost airline, Tiger, wasn't so lucky. In the end, he ended up uh, not able to get a flight home uh, on Tiger Airways, but taking a train from Bangkok to Chiang Mai and purchasing a business class ticket on Silk Air to get from Chiang Mai to Singapore, um, also about uh, seven to eight days later. Um, so, so he was really out of pocket. As Brett's colleague discovered, in most parts of the world, there's no obligation for airlines to provide care or compensation at a time of major disruption. Some of them do, some don't. Surely, you may be thinking, the answer is travel insurance. But Fast Track has found wide variations in the level of cover, with many policies not paying out at all for disruption. The compensation is going to be limited. Uh, it's designed to cover you for emergency rations. It's not designed to cover you for staying in hotels or eating in, uh, in fancy restaurants while you've been delayed. And that's what the policy is priced for. You uh, get what you pay for. So here's what you need to think about before you book your next international trip. In many countries, if you book a package involving flights and accommodation, then the travel provider is obliged to look after you, booking new hotel rooms and rearranging flights. If you're flying from a European Union airport and it's delayed or cancelled, then the airline must provide meals and accommodation until it can get you to your destination. That also applies on an EU airline anywhere in the world. Finally, make sure that the travel insurance cover you buy gives you the level of cover you need. Meanwhile, Robin and Louise Gillard are counting the cost of a birthday trip that was hardly a cause for celebration. They still feel their tour operator didn't do enough. We didn't get a holiday from Thomas Cook, um, and I think had they have stepped up straight away, um, sorted out a hotel, we could have actually salvaged a few days of our holiday. We could have had the four days in New York that we originally booked. They say they're hoping to return to see New York properly sometime soon. And I've advised the couple to pursue their claim for out-of-pocket expenses with their travel provider. Happily, New York is getting back on its feet and is welcoming visitors as usual to America's biggest city.